Hi everyone, my name's Jack. Welcome back to The Red Path. Um, this is episode 8 of WAC Weekly, um, the show where we look at Team Red Path news as well as World Eaters out in the world. Um, I have a bumper episode this week to mark the 8th episode of the series. Um, not only were there lots of very strong performances, four members of the team are in action, um, a 4-1 and one out in the world, um, and we'll even have Dara and Jamie on to the show later to discuss their list for the upcoming Las Vegas Open, the RBO, the end of the season, um, as well as how rankings might shake out. Okay, so diving straight into the World Eaters Tournament Roundup, um, there were 47 games last weekend, um, including 7 GTs, 7 GT performances I should say, with 5 of those at the Nottingham Super Major um, in the UK. Um, so there was a 4 and 1, not at Nottingham, 2 3 and 2s, uh, 3 2 and 3s and a 1 and 4. Uh, there were also 4 RTTs including 1 1 and 2, 1 0 oh, 1 2 uh, and then 2 0 oh, and 3s, which meant that the overall win rate um, for the faction was 38.3%. Um, <clears throat> again, this is slightly lower because I'm pulling in RTDs. Um, obviously, the big news is that LVO is now only two weeks away. Um, there are lots of big World Eaters names in attendance. So I know that Mark and Ben, so second and third place at the moment, are both in attendance. Um, and there is a lot to play for at the end of the season. So Ben needs to get 173 ITC points at the LBO to catch me, um, and I think Mark needs nearer 200, but those are both very doable. Um, like three, three, some strong 3-3s three, or some strong 4-2s um, will definitely see them overtake me right at the end. Um, it's also potentially the same weekend as, uh, as pre-orders. Obviously, we've had the Combat Patrol revealed uh, for World Eaters uh, with the Juggalord, 10 Jackals and 20 Berserkers. Um, Warhammer Plus has also announced that there's going to be a bat rep on Wednesday that I'm sure we'll have a video out for um, analysing the little details. Um, obviously Guard has been confirmed as having their full release on the 28th of January, so LBO weekend with pre-orders next week on the 21st. Um, so let's get into Team Red Path news. As I said, very active week for the team. Four members of the team were in action. Um, so, including myself and Jamie. So let's start in the UK with Josh Connor, who uh, Lemon Russ in the Discord went to a small RTT in Kent, played three very tough games against New Guard, Red Corsairs, and Death Guard, and unfortunately ended up at 0-3. Um, however, the list is won the event in our hearts. I feel um, so. Chaos Lord with Flames of Fight, Gorefather, so Mortal Wound Machine. Plasma Pistol, Demon Prince of Wings, so uh, potential skulls, cultists, 20 berserkers, Master of Executions with Gorget, 10 a, a Possessed Bomb, which Josh, I know Josh has been running quite a lot, um, even in his triple ran, land raider list, 3 Chaos Spawns, um, so no land raiders, and then finally a Mastodon. Yep, yeah. <laughs> we've seen them a couple of times. And it's great to see someone in the team running one because Mastodons are hilarious. Um, everyone fantasizes about running the party bus, but not everyone can <laughs> not everyone can afford that massive chunk of resin. So uh, props to for him taking it to an event. Um, I would be terrified to do that. I'm not sure I could lift it either. Um, so yeah, hard luck to Josh. Um, own three, but new codex around the corner shake up this building we'll have some interesting stuff to play with um up, ne up next is chase anderson so sergeant joel in the discord um went to a 20 player rtt in utah in the us uh, and went one and two um he beat deathwing which is always a rough matchup um the loss came to ravenwing so he played two lots of death uh two lots of um dark angels um, and then a full dog walker of Adam List just before that goes away um, soon. <laughs> because uh, obviously no Supreme Commands in the Arx Foeman meta. So uh, yeah, it's it's a fun looking list. Um, so the Axe on the Demon Prince was something that caught my eye. Uh, it's a bit unusual. Strength 11 I think that gets you to. But with slightly less AP. Um, 
Illusory Supplication on the Dark Apostle, Four Squads, Five Berserkers, No Cultists, a Big Blob of Butchers with the Rune, um, some Power Fists in there, some Heavy Flamers, which is good fun. Um, a Gorgeous Mo, again, uh, it, I, it, otherwise Mo's do just die as soon as they've hit whatever they're hitting. Um, I think I still prefer the, the being able to fish for hits. I prefer the Glass Cannon playstyle, I think, rather than the tanking and then exploding. Uh, five Possessed, a single spawn, a couple of Rhinos, and a Drill with Heavy Flamers, and then Abaddon with his Warlord traits. Um, so yeah, I, I, it's, <laughs> it's a familiar looking list. It's along the lines of stuff that I've been running as well. Um, just trades out Chosen for Berserkers, which is possibly the better choice anyway, um, with their Obsec. Um, yeah, so congrats Chase for, for getting the win against Deathwing. Um, I know I struggled into Deathwing quite a lot. Um, yeah. So then finally, um, well not finally, Jamie also went to an RTT. Um, and I think there's there'll be mention of it in the later section when I when I talk to him. But um, Jamie unfortunately also went 0-3. It was a weird event by all accounts because they used... So they they didn't use the new mission or the new new missions, and they didn't use the new Oxbowman detachment. But they also kind of did use the Oxbowman detachment. You could take Oxbowman detachments or you could take Nephilim detachments. They did use the new points and they did use um, the new data slate. So it's a really really weird mix of rules. Um, and I, I mean I'm not surprised. Stuff didn't quite go to plan because it sounds like it was absolute chaos there. Um, so Dean Prince with, that is, yeah, the, how, how I run my Dean Prince, so Disciple of Corn is reroll hits and wounds against vehicles or units with anything uh, that has five wounds or more, um, or characters, sorry, um, so it makes him a good character hunter for skulls. Um, Dark Fossil with Soul Terror Portent, which I believe is plus one to wound on ranged units. Um, so a squad of cultists for backline, four squads of five berserkers just for contesting objectives. Big blob of raptors and a big blob of warp talons for some early pressure or athletic frenzy targets. It gives him a choice um, on depending on what he wants to hit with them. Um, a couple of rhinos with the free the free equipment, so Mouse Habit Launcher is nice. And then some allied war dogs. Um, so executioners, we have a video coming out about allies and how to use and, and how we think they should be what, what people should be looking for. Um, with Arx Bowman coming out, coming around. Um, so executioners are the double auto cannon ones. So two D three shots at strength seven minus two um, damage three um, on each arm. So forty three shots total. Um, they hit a really nice break point. Flat three damage is something that we um, traditionally lack. Um, AP two is a really nice break point, um, especially with armor of contempt not being in effect for this event. Um, it me means they shred marines. They're also very good in custodies because it puts them to their own ball. And each fail save is a dead custode. Or two is a dead bike, which is very nice. Um, Dark Forging is a hilarious tech piece that we've been talking about into what is potentially going to be a guard meta. Um, Dark Forging adds four inches to the, the range of all the guns. So 64 inch um, auto cannons, which means you, you, you're you not get, you're not outranging them. Um, and 40 inch Diabolus Heavy Stubbers. Um, it also adds one strength and one damage to each of the heavy stubbers. So strength six, damage two. Still no AP, but strength six, damage two. Crucially, it, it means they can ignore lookout, sir. So sniper stubbers are a thing now. Strength six, AP, uh, AP zero, uh, damage two. Pretty good into guard, who are top as three. It also helps us get around stuff like fight last characters. I won't go into it too much detail because we do have another video coming that goes into a lot of detail about this. Um... And then obviously, finally, Abaddon with all his Warlord traits. So, yeah, um, it's a, a nice little glimpse at something we might get to play around with in the, the New York Bowman. I I am going to say that I am sold on Knights over Demons as an allied detachment because um, it adds something that we don't have. Psychic Defense is nice, but having shooting especially good shooting that is quite efficient and on T7 fast offset counts as five models bodies really nice I think it's better than flesh hounds but that's my opinion tell me why I'm wrong in the comments or in the discord join the discord 
and tell me how much I'm wrong. I love being at it loads. It's great. Um, yeah, and and this is so. This this is viable now while we have this weird limbo period with index hammer, and it will be viable in our new book because the wording on the arc moment attachment is chaos attachment. If your arc moment attachment is chaos, and I would assume world eaters will have the chaos keyword, um, we can ally in chaos knights um, and the dreadblade um, sort of agent of chaos rule that is in the knights codex at the moment means that we can ally them in and still get our mono faction bonuses. As far as I'm aware. Um, yeah, so that was Jamie. Um, and then finally, um, I was also in action this weekend. As I mentioned last week, I was going to the Nottingham Super Major. I was one of the five. Um, I uh, did all right. I finished at three and two. Um, a 388 player event in the end. Um, I had five really great games. They were really fun. Um, I can also pinpoint the points at which I lost my, my two. Um, so that makes me feel kind of better about them. They were they were both around dice rolls, which makes me feel less better about them. Um, statistically, the two instances which I'll get into, sure. Well, one of them is questionable because it was literally a coin flip, but the other one was I should have I should have killed what I was going into with the amount of stuff I put into it. But I'll get into that in a sec. Uh, my first game was Death Guard. Um, I won seventy eight sixty. It was a really weird list that had Morty. Uh, 10 block of Blight Lords, some Death Shroud, a 10 block of Plague Marines, 5 block of Plague Marines, some Box Walkers, um, PBC, and one of the Flying Mower things. Um, I, yeah, it, it just went pretty well. Um, he sent Morty up as a distraction card effects. My Butchers and Abaddon minced him far quicker than I think he was hoping. Um, and then my Counter Charge kind of just swept through into his deployment zone very quickly, um, which, yeah was kind of I was a bit I was a bit nervous at the start and obviously it was quite a close game at 7860 but it was it ends up alright in the end. Um so off the back of that I ended up playing Chaos Knights in game two. Um the turning point was in my turn two I believe. I think it was turn two because I think I went first. Um where I sent eight red butchers, three possessed, a, mar a hateful master of executions and Abaddon into a 28 wound Dark Master Megera. So um, Blessings of the Dark Master is, because he wasn't favored, it gave him no rerolls to hit or wound or damage, but that's not relevant. So no rerolls to hit or wound against him. So I sent, yeah, eight butchers, three possessed, Master of Executions and Abaddon into him um, to try and do 28 wounds to him because he, he's worth 500 and something points. So it would have been a very big swing. And obviously that lot combined is probably about 800 points. Um, I did 27 wounds to him, um, and he survived on one wound. It surviving meant that he could, the next turn, fall back, flame at Abaddon in the face, and then when he charged in, charged in and failed to kill much, um, he auto-exploded and killed Abaddon, which is quite a big swing, because there was not much else in the army that could have done too much to Abaddon as he was character protected after that point or would have been character protected after that point um, and so that was a bit frustrating a little bit um, yeah so that was game two um, unfortunately lost 60-85 in that one uh, at one point it was looking like I was going to end up on 20-30 points so I'm pretty happy to have pulled it back to 60 um, and it allowed me to have possibly one of my more fun games of 40k that I can remember into weirdly sisters um in game three um so he wasn't running bloody rose who's running evan chalice which allows you to double up on miracle dice and count them as a six um and then uh there was something else about taking two sacred rights i think but i can't remember which the second one was he took the, the extra combat ability one but i can't remember what the second one was um basically he introduced me to the tribe of saint catherine i'd never seen that before it was a really cool model really nicely painted um, and he had a big block of 20 sisters um, that he basically funneled all of his buffs into. So kept the Hospitaller around them as well. Um, they had a 3-up, 4-up, 6-up for pretty much the whole game and Transhuman. Um, like to the extent that when I sent Abaddon into them, um, he killed 5 with all those buffs. Which, yeah, not used to that happening. Um, he could also res D3 a turn with the Hospitaller's um, strat. It was a very fun game. And I was a little bit scared 
when Avalon only killed five, I thought I'd bounced and I was then going to lose horribly. But helped by some very bloodthirsty rhinos running down Zephyrim, which was funny in itself. Um, I did manage to get through them in the end and uh, hold his scoring relatively low as well. Um, so I managed to get the win on that one, which was 94-73. Um, again, very close game, but um, pulled away with it at the end a little bit when Abaddon finally got through that brick and then murdered all of his characters um, straight afterwards. Um, so then game four, uh, so first thing on Sunday, um, I matched into Althway. Uh, it was a weird Althway list. He went really wide on Aspect Warriors. Um, so a big 10-man blob of Fire Dragons, big 10-man blob of Warp Spiders, which I've never seen before too. Five mans of Scorpions. A five man of Banshees, Carandras, um, far, uh, a Farsa Skyrunner, a Warlock Skyrunner, two Warlocks, Eldrad, a couple of 19 inch move Wave Serpents, uh, and some Rangers to do Scout the Enemy. Um, so I told Dara that I was going to do a Psyox play, and then he was like, don't do it, but only sent the message three minutes after I'd already done it, which was putting Skulls for the Skull Throne on Carandras. I did this knowing that he had a base cap, but only six wounds, and knowing that there was one CP strat for him to revive. And in my turn, I think three, may have been four, I had it set up so that I would shoot him to death, he would play the red strat, because otherwise he'd lose loads of primary points, he would play the red strat, and then I'd charge him and kill him again to get the full 15 with my Demon Prince on Skulls. And <laughs> so, he died to the shooting, all, all going as planned. Four combi bolters into a two-up save. It wasn't a sure thing, but he did die to the shooting. He then played the strat. One CP, four up, he gets back up um, exactly where he was, um, and he rolled a three, which is not ideal. It end, so it meant that I only got five points on skulls instead of the planned 15. Um, it also meant that he was still able to hold the primary because he was able to move something else onto the onto the objective um, because I ended up charging off in different directions thinking I, I part of the whole incident was a mistake from me I forgot that he had got obsec off onto his banshees so I was like cool I'll still hold that even if he moves the banshee on and then he was like no will of Azerian a, a a don't fucking know went off and made it obsec and moved it on took the objective off me so it ended up being a 14 point swing and I lost by 12 um, so my final score was 66-78, which was, again, a bit frustrating because it was, that one, the dice roll mattered less because it was a 50, it was literally a 50-50. Um, and I, I made some other mistakes, I think, um, around just for getting buffs and, and stuff like that. Um, so then I went into my final game at 2-2, um, matched into Red Corsairs, and I was like, cool, an army that hits almost as fast, hard as me, is much faster than me, and has psychic support. We'll see what happens. Um, and I went second, and he sort of... I feel like he was kind of done with the tournament. He, he he used the orbital bombardment strat on me, which was funny, until I then... I moved into it intentionally and then made a long bomb charge in my turn one because he'd moved forwards towards me. Um, whereas I feel the play might have been for him to just not move forwards towards me, and then I wouldn't have even tried the charge, or I would have had to move in and just tank the orbital bombardment. Um... But either way, he moved for he. I went second. He came towards me, used that strat, and therefore all of his CP, which meant that turn one was suddenly my Cowabunga turn. Um, so my master of executions, Abaddon, all my butchers, my possessed, um, and my chosen tried to go in. My chosen failed a five inch charge, but everything else made it in. Um, and I killed most of his possessed bomb he had 10 possessed with the black rune and abaddon killed like six of them and then my terminates killed a few more um mo killed the rhino which limited his speed got the chosen out i think he lost a couple on the way out as well um it pinned him back a lot because i basically just chucked a wall of bodies at him and made him deal with them um and his possessed bomb was his main like damage dealing unit um his clapback killed a lot of my stuff, but he whiffed a bit with his bikers into my chosen, which meant that there was just this slap fight going on on my precious precious artifact for like the whole fight, the whole game. Um, and yeah, Abaddon also survived like four turns on three wounds or less because I kept four up denying his smites, which was irritating him greatly. And then he couldn't really get through Mark of Zinch because the rest of my army was just butchering the rest of his army. Um, 
So I ended up winning that one 86-62. Ended up not quite maxing stuff out because my, my Dim Prince failed to kill a wounded Maul of Fiends. And then um, I also lost six Terminators to a Smash Apostle with the Black Mace and a Demon Prince um, through Illusory, which I feel like maybe happens, but it was... Yeah, I wasn't expecting to lose that many on, this, on the clap back, but 86-62, so I ended up with a, a decent enough 3-2. and two. I think I finished 130th out of 388. Um, one of the other performances we'll get on to in a sec, uh, finished 109th with 3-2, and two, and I think he scored 10 more battle points than me, so I need to get a bit better at, at maximising my points, I think. I'm not, I'm, I'm not that good at maximising my points, um, and I think I'm too conservative, and therefore, by the time the battle's decided, I... Don't have enough time to, to max all my secondaries. Maybe that's something around secondary selection for me as well. Um, but yeah, um, as promised, here is my list. Um, it's fairly unchanged from the list I took before, before Christmas. Um, so the Disciple of Corn, Demon Prince, Illusion Supplication on the Apostle, Cultus and just two squads of Berserkers, um, a Blob of Terminators. Yeah, Blob of Terminators, just bare bones with uh, Black Rune. Uh, two squads are chosen. The AP4 is really nice because we're still using Armour Contempt here. Uh, March of Executions with Hatred to reroll all the hits and fish for sixes. Didn't quite come off quite as spectacularly as the Into the Avatar before Christmas, but still did some work. Um, I think he did something like 12 damage to the Megara in the... Uh, and that was without rerolls in, uh, into the Megara in the game two. Um, five, uh, five Possessed, again, standard for me. Just a fast unit that is damage too. Two Rhinos, uh, Tarax with Flamers, and then finally, obviously, Abaddon with the uh, real charges. Um, it's quite a blunt instrument kind of list. I haven't. It, it's quite simple to use, and that's kind of why I enjoyed it because it's it takes a lot of the thinking out of, out of a tournament, which and I, I kind of just want, wasn't in the part of the season now where I just want to have fun. Um, I needed to do really well at the tournament to to close out um, best in fact, best in sub action. So I, I kind of like I don't know. I, <laughs> after I lost my second game, a game where I felt like I could have won, but didn't, um, I was just there to have fun. I, I, it changed my mindset, and I'm kind of grateful it did, actually, because I ended up having a really good time. My third game was, was honestly really fun. Um, just lots of joking. Just good fun. Um, yeah, so then let's go on to other World Eaters tournament performances out in the world. I mentioned uh, Liam. Uh, Wurzik, who has been smashing it recently, a lot of events, um, he was also at Nottingham this weekend, um, putting up a lot of strong performances, he also went 3-2, and, and and as I said, finished uh, 10 points ahead of me, 10 points more than me, um, so finished 109th at this, at this 388 player event. Um, so he had wins into Dark Harlequins, which again, something I've never managed, Ultramarines and a Deathwing Ravenwing mix, mix list. Um, and then there are a couple of losses to Twilight Harlequins, uh, which are the extra AP ones, and Mixed Demons, including uh, Bellacore. Um, so this list, uh, <laughs> Abaddon with his Warlord Traits, Dark Boss with Violent Urgency to make those charges go off. Um, Colsis Mob, Four Squads of Five Berserkers. That's Four Squads of Five Berserkers makes me feel everyone seems to run them, and everyone seems to do quite well with them. And that's making me feel like I've missed a trick for the last, like, six months. Which is not a great feeling, but eh, we're about to not have that, and I, fine. I'll probably start running more berserks in the new book. Um, big Squad of Terminators, that's a 10 block, I believe, uh, with a Chain Fist um, and Black Rune. Uh, yeah, fairly, fairly standard, I think. Five Possessed, uh, Venom Crawler, fast damage too. Yeah, take it, and it's got some shooting with Exploding Sixes for four turns. Five War Talons, presumably to give a, a Frenzy option. Um, or just for some fast harassment. Um, a land raider, fine. Tough design, hard to shift. Um, and lads cannons, fine. Yeah, there's four of them, so there's a bit of redundancy at least. Uh, and then a rhino just to speed things up. So I can only imagine the berserkers were split across the rhino and the land raider, using it as a springboard. Um, the apostle and the and Abaddon following the terminators around to buff them with charge distance. Violent Urgency on a Dark Apostle is actually a really cool tech piece, just because in this build the Apostle is going to be sticking to the Terminators anyway, so you might as well, and he's buffing, he's sticking with them to buff them, right? So you might as well like get as much mileage out of the buffing as you can, um, or out of the fact that 
your your character is a buffing character, just have him buff that squad right, which is great. Um, I I wonder if we'll keep something like that. Rumors are we're getting a violent urgency type effect with blood type, but we'll see how expensive it is and how viable that is as a strat to build around because it is kind of like a nice to have now. Um, I've seen people try to use it as a buff to deep strike charges, but an eight inch charge is still not not something to base a battle plan around. I don't think. Um, the seven inch with the two of them next to each other maybe, but then you're deep striking like a lot of stuff, and you you, you feel thin on board presence early on. Um, and if you come up against rare corsairs and they spend two CP to just say no, you can't bring in that unit this turn, then you're a little bit fucked. So also you'd have to bring the boss in either from strat reserve or in a uh, drop pod or a drill, I guess. But yeah, um, yeah. So three and two. Obviously a really strong performance, beat me, um, which is not that hard to do, but um, sorry, that makes it sound like I'm diminishing his achievement and I'm not intending to do that. I was being self-deprecating. Um, he, it, a very good performance, and as I say, he's been smashing it recently, um, so I'm excited to see what he can do with the new book, um, and I might steal some of his lists unashamedly, because that's the only way I design lists anymore, apparently. Um, yeah. So, obviously a very strong performance at a very big event in the UK. Uh, finally, um, so we had Scott De Winter Wilkie. Uh, let me know if I butchered your name. 36 player GT over near Vancouver in Canada. Um, and this list went 4-1. and one. So, massive congrats to Scott. Um, some strong wins against some very strong factions as well. Um, from the looks of it, it was still using Nephilim rules. Um, so he got an 88-87 win versus Creations of Baal with Flamers. Amazing. Also 88. Um, game two, he had... Well, no, I don't know. I can't remember the order, actually. But he also had a win against um, Leagues of Otam, uh, Yumea Conglomerates, so the the Inborn one, which is a four up Inborn on two up saves and five up Inborn on everything else. And he had three Land Fortresses. Um, so three... Land Raiders with two up, four ups, and beam weapons, I think. Yeah, that sounds horrible. So, 80 42 win against them, so a pretty big win as well. Um, then, also an 82 42 win against Blood Angels with a lot of Sandguard um, and some Vanguard vets. And from memory, some uh, there was Death Company Dreadnought in there and some Death Company and like Salt Marines and stuff like that. All the, all the fast combat stuff that Blood Angels do. Um, he did also have an 85 34 win against Tau with Riptide. With a Riptide and and, a, and one bomber, not two, but um, yeah, I mean beating Tower is always good too because fuck Tower. Um, his his list was his loss. Sorry, was to a, a quite a weird uh, Iron Hand successor list that I kind of want to spend more time looking at at some point because he he was running Starwatt and Stealthy and Stealthy I believe is half of the Raven God trait, which is the uh, cover save over twelve inches away. Um, or you get dense if you're in light cover. Um, and Stalwart, I'm not sure. I want to say that's a 5-up shrug against mortals, but I'm not sure about that. Do not quote me on that. Um, and the focal point of his list, he had a chapter master and some other support characters, and then he had a big brick of Devastated Centurions with Las Cannons, which I assume puts out a lot of firepower. Um, there are a couple of other bits, so like a so assault terminators, stuff like that, just general stuff. It was it, as I say, it was a weird list. Um, uh, Scott did lose fifty five eighty four to that. Um, yeah, um, so let's just have a quick look at the list because I mean, four and ones are fairly rare for World Eats at the moment, um, and this is quite an unconventional list. So. Chaos Lord and in Terminator armor with two CP spent for Hatred Incarnate, Lightning Claws, and Zal. So what this means is he goes to Watch Strength six. Um, two Lightning Claws means uh, nine attacks on the charge. Uh, Ten with Hatred Incarnate, um, re-rolling all hits and wounds, and one of the Lightning Claws is D three plus one damage. So min two. That's quite nice. It's a bit of a blender. Great. <laughs> um, so Dark Fox would lose his application, a bit more standard. Um, three squads of eight Berserkers. Uh, love the fluff. And also the killing power. 
um, a big block of red butchers that also have black rune. Um, there are one, two, three, four combi flamers, two heavy flamers, two power fists, two double accursed weapons, a chain fit, and two chain fists. That is a beefy unit that is going to kill a lot of things that it touches. And I don't know if it teleports in with the lords or the lord just follows them up and the apostle follows them up. That would probably be my guess, but I don't know. Uh, Master of Executions with Gorget. Yeah, so hard to, harder to kill and still got the killing power and still priced to move at 80 points. Uh, Land Raider, Vindicator, love that stuff. Two Obliterators, again, Obliterators in World Eaters. I, I, a few of you tried to explain it to me when, when there was that list with, with a couple of threes. I still don't get it. I, like The only profile that I can see that is decent is the, the Horde Curates profile. I don't know. <laughs> I still don't get it. Like that, that I get, I get their melee isn't terrible, but like it's also not good, and like the the low volume shots are too low volume to be be like reliable. I think, or it is my feeling. Um, tell me again when I'm wrong. While I'm wrong, why I'm wrong? Illuminate me to the ways of the obliterator. Um, so then there were obviously two runners as well to transport. I guess two of the squads of the berserkers, and then the third squad went in the land raider would be my assumption and possibly the Master of Executions in the Land Raider as well. One of the Rhinos, there's flexibility there because this one's vague so you, you, they can fit in anything. Um, so obviously massive congrats to Scott, big 4-1. Um, as I say, doesn't happen that often, so big props. Um, and up next we are going to have some special guests, so stay tuned for some LVO breakdowns. Okay, uh, cool. We've got uh, Jamie and Dara here now to talk about their LVO lists. Um, I'm sure everyone's very excited to hear the crazy innovations, particularly out of Dara, um, from his commentary list, all the changes that he's made. Um, it's ridiculous. Isn't it? It, is, it is a completely yeah, yeah, different a lot, list. A lot, of, a lot of innovation, a lot of new. <laughs> just, just like those three brass scorpions, just going to do work, man. Mm -hmm. I don't, uh, I don't well, know how he you know, three scorpions you know, and three if, lords of skulls. I don't know how he did it. I don't know how he fit that in 2004. I'll say this right now. If Frontline Gaming had said Arx of Omen was going to be legal for LVO, I would have brought at least one brass scorpion. Hell yeah. <laughs> but, okay. Yeah. And with, with that, I guess, Dara, do you want to talk us through your drastically different list? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, so, yeah, LVO coming up is obviously super high but um unfortunately i haven't really been able to get a whole bunch of practice in recently uh, a lot of like you know life stuff going on moving house and etc etc covid blah 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 but um i have not really been playing that much 40k like i played my first game of 40k this past weekend um uh since coventry so <laughs> taking quite a while off like multiple months yeah. and i was super rusty but um yeah so build up to lvo i just didn't really feel like um writing a new list or anything like that you know i, I but also i was really happy with how my list did at coventry like it went four no went five and it? three mate three wait what how did five, I do? five and five three, and three. That you was did the it, opposite yeah. of me i did three and five Thank you for uh, could, reminding uh, yeah, me of that. Remember. But I was really happy with how it played. <laughs> like it, it was good into uh, really tough enemies like Tau and Harlequins, right? Which is things that I thought it would be really sucky into. Um, and it sucks into Tyranids, but like what doesn't, you know, yeah. that yeah. we can build for anyway. Sure. Um, and I really like the like the vibe of the list, like the aesthetic and everything going on. It, it was just a ton of fun to pilot. And it's also not very complicated to pilot either, which is good for me because then like if you have a fairly simple list, you can make the difficult decisions in the game. I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so if you haven't already heard from from my commentary breakdown, it's a demon prince with wings, um, Macrolor, the leader of my boys, and he has a sword and the mantle of traitors, um, which is actually really good on him because of the amount of core units I have in this list. I it was off and then it was back on, and and now I'm really happy with it as well. I get a lot of use out of it. Um, there's an apostle with illusory supplication, which is no surprise to anyone. There's uh, two five-man berserker squads. There's one eight-man. They have banners, all the usual stuff. Two cultist squads for 
objective things. Um, then in the elite slot, this is where the real meat of the list is. So we've got eight red butchers with the black rune of damnation, which is a real revolutionary tech piece. I don't think anyone <laughs> else is quite doing that. You know, um, uh, it's it's, it's my signature all. move. I would say, yeah, like it's it's you're up like, there with the drills in terms of innovation, pioneering. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I like to think so. I don't really think many people in the LVO will be expecting you know a squad of terminators, especially <laughs> <Really? in chaos. laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. No, it, it's going to take a lot of people by surprise. But yeah, I've got them. Shocker. Um, I have the Master of Executions. This is Hateful Mo or Mo Incarnate, as I call him sometimes. So he has um, Hatred Incarnate, I think it is, yeah. which really has done so much work. I, I was running him with Gorget for a long time, but um, when he's like re rolling all of his hits, gets an extra strength and an extra attack on the charge, yeah. the mortal wounds that he puts out is it, it's just it always takes me by surprise, you know, Ooh. even though I've used him so many times, I'm always just like, man, this guy is like, he is tapped. He is really, yeah. really good. So I've got him. I've got um, eight chosen as well. Uh, they all just have a cursed weapons and bolters, and there is an icon in that unit too. Um, the chosen I find are just incredible. They're people underestimate them. I underestimate them, and at the end of the game, we're both really surprised with how they did, and they've probably won me the game. Um, I think they won me like quite a few of my games in Coventry, to be honest. Like they're they're a real clutch unit. But then in the transports, we have one drill with Volkite. One drill with flamers, just because of points, no particular yeah. reasons there. And a rhino. Um, so the rhino is probably going to have the chosen in it, and then the drills will have the master executions, the eight man, and the two five man berserker squads. Sometimes they'll be in deep strike. It's actually like pretty common for me to deep strike the drill, at least one drill nowadays, yeah. anyway. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much the list. So literally zero changes from Coventry due to, you know, a bunch of like live stuff and just not really being too interested in playing stale rules at the minute i want to play the arc stuff i want to play the new book yeah it, right. it's been difficult for me to find the motivation to actually sit down and um and write yeah. write lists i think not necessarily play the game but actually write a list when you know we've seen all these leaks we've seen what arcs of omen is looking like and that's so yeah. exciting and fresh and every time i open battle scribe to write a list it's like do you want to update your data and i have to say no and it just kills <laughs> me you know <laughs> yeah um, but yeah, so keeping it simple nice. for the LVO, you know, don't want to confuse myself too much. So I've gone with a gone with a classic, I think. Nice, that's fair enough. Uh, I think we did describe it as the Ron Seal list when we were take when you were taking it into Coventry, right? Um, I and it is it like the way we said it, it was like it does exactly what it says in the tin. Yeah. You can kill someone if you throw it at them, yeah. and if you smell it for long enough, it will kill you as well. <laughs> too much oil, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I guess I've got a couple of questions about. Um, you mentioned deep striking at least one drill. Um, what like? What's your thought process ahead of the game? Like, if you rock up to the table and you've got a certain army, what determines whether whether or not you're going to deep strike one, two, none? Like, how do you decide? Yeah, I mean, it, it's an interesting one. So the only time I'm going to deep strike two is if I'm playing Votan. <laughs> pretty obvious reasons yeah, probably yeah. try and reserve the rhino as well <laughs> um but yeah like i would say for the the vast majority of games i'll pop one in deep strike just because it's a nice little tech piece to have yeah. um i as much as it pained me to do it i listened to jamie's advice um as i was prepping like last year and didn't get the berserkers out of the drill a bunch of times when it came up and it's actually really good i really like that little tech piece um because you know like getting them out without violent urgency, blah, blah, blah. It's kind of hard to make those charges. Yeah. But even just popping up and being like, cool, here's a bunch of Melta. And it's usually the Flamer drill as well yeah, that I deep strike, because sure. the Volkite one can sometimes get shots off early doors, yeah. Yeah. especially if they push aggressively into me. Um, the only times that I wouldn't really deep strike uh, one of the drills is if I'm facing like a seriously aggro combat army, like we'll say Blood Angels, or like um, an army that I know is going to spread out all yeah. over the board and make things awkward, like Tyranid Horde, or like uh, Witch Cult Spam from Jakari. Quins, I guess, is well maybe quins i actually both my games in commentary i deep struck one of the drills and i i, I think it was the correct play each time um because yeah. like quins can spread out but you can also kind of use that to your advantage and funnel them into certain ways that's how i won the quins game that i did and brought it pretty close to the other one in that yeah. that tournament um so i actually and it's like the thing about it as well is like you can use that drill and deep strike against the quins as like a thing that they always have to be thinking about so it's forcing them to spread in certain directions, yeah. which you can kind of like work against, if that makes sense. Like you yeah. can be pushing them into the area that they want to screen the drill. So then it comes in in a more favorable position for you. So that, like, this is why I like to keep the list simple, because I like to think about these things during the game. 
Um, and if the list is really complicated, I can't think about those things. So, but yeah, that, like I would say the vast majority of the time, the go-to is just deep strike one of the drills. Um, and it usually has the eight man squad inside it. And yeah. then, you know, if there are specific situations where it's better to start both on the board in the case of heavy combat armies or both of them in deep strike in the case of heavy shooting armies, I'll just go with that. That's fair. Okay. Um, and I, I guess my other question was just about, uh, do you have any like go-to secondaries? I know that I, when I ran my numbers for this season, uh, I have tried desperately to make skulls for the skull throwing work. Um, I tend to take the long wall quite a lot as well, by the looks of it. But I was wondering if you have any, if, if this list you feel is is teched for any specific secondaries. I don't really think the list is teched for any. I mean, like skulls is fine when it when it's fine, if that makes sense. <laughs> like when it's good, it's good. When it's bad, it sucks. Yeah. Um, long war is like one that I I do take a bunch as well, and uh, race the glory, my own personal favorite, <laughs> as you know. Yeah. Um, but I I wouldn't say it's like really teched into anything. It's it, it, it's again like the list is simple so that I can make those decisions on the day in terms of like okay this is like generally the long war is going to be in there right just yeah. because it's like it's a steady secondary um, and a lot of the time I do take Nephilim as well having two cultist squads is, is pretty okay for that on most deployments as well and like um, sorry I forgot to say there's six possessed in my list they often do <laughs> R&D <laughs> nice I completely forgot about them. I was thinking it was a little bit small. Um, but yeah, they, they can be R&D or alpha strikey. It just depends on what the situation calls for and what the deployment map is yeah. as well. Uh, so like normally I'll get three quarters in R&D. Rarely I'll get four. But I'll take the eight points as well. The list is designed to win entirely on primary and not really... I'm, I'm taking Mike P's advice that secondaries are a social construct created to sell more Necron Warriors. Ah. Like that, that spoke to me deeply and I just took his advice and I play only primary now. <laughs> nice. I mean, yeah, I mean, if it works as well, right? Five and three yeah, accomplishments exactly. is pretty good. Um, and I, I guess I was, I, I'll save that to the end, actually. I will ask both of you together at the end. So, Jamie, uh, if you want to take us through through your list, I believe it's something quite out of the box in terms of yeah. what these lists I've been going through, particularly on, on this, this show, at least. Um, so, take it away. So this is a, a list I've been I've been working on for a while. I've had quite a few games with it, probably uh, close to 20 games with it, at, at least 90% core of the list, mostly on TTS. I did take it to um, more or less the same thing to a charity tournament in December. But basically it's this. We've got the Demon Prince with wings. Um, he has Disciple of Corn and the Sword. So Great anyone choice. unfamiliar, re-rolling hits and wounds against uh, characters, and any unit that has five or more wounds. Um, then we've got a Warpsmith with the Warlord trait Eternal Vendetta, which is uh, you pick a enemy unit. Uh, there's a, a pre-game, you know, basically when you're doing your Apoplectic Frenzies and stuff, pick an, one enemy unit and then any core units of yours which are within six inches of the Warpsmith in this case will re-roll wounds against that unit. Uh, then we've got a squad of 13 cultists, just because of points and for no prisoners' purposes. Uh, then we've got four squads of five berserkers, all with icons. A squad of five warp talons, a squad of eight warp talons. A rhino with a havoc launcher, again because of points. Um, because if I had an extra cultist instead, I would have jumped up a bracket in no prisoners. And uh, we've got a badden. Then we have two contemptors with volkite culverins. And contemptors are core. Yep. So the uh, shall I just go into what the strategy? Yeah, is? I, I was going to ask like what what sort of synergies you have there, but um, yeah, go, go, go for it. So <laughs> it's a combination of Abaddon, the Warp Smith, the Demon Prince, sometimes, and the contemptors are the uh, heavy hitters. So you pick an enemy unit. This is great if someone's rocking an aircraft or a, a lord of war but aircraft yeah. will be more common because of harpies sun sharks, sun sharks uh, yeah. things like that maybe the odd admec players still rocking around using the old rules or you know the current old rules whatever the hell it is <laughs> so the abaddon will be able to give four rerolls to hit to one of the contemptors yeah the war myth will give plus one to hit to the other contemptor and abaddon or the prince will give that re-roll one ones. re-roll ones yeah. if they're within six so both of them are hitting on twos, re-rolling ones, or hitting on threes, re-rolling everything. Then if there's a, an aircraft or a Lord of War, 
you can just be obscured and as long as you've got true line of sight you know through windows or whatnot you yeah. can target that unit with all rerolls to hit and all rerolls to wound if the opponent doesn't have that they're more than likely going to have a terminator brick or mm. you know a, a, yeah. a land fortress or something however the problem arises with stuff like votan iron warriors salamanders maybe custodies with uh, some of their units yeah where they can turn off re-rolls or you can't re-roll to wound but that's about probably 20 percent, 15 percent of lists i'll play one or two i'm sure yeah but essentially that's what it is it's maximizing the volkite um on turn one the contemptors are also exploding sixes yeah. so if i really need it i can fish for sixes to get the explosions especially on the um what i have done is put four re-rolls and plus one on one contemptor so i'm hitting on twos and i do everything that's not six Re pick it up yeah. yeah and um it it's not always going to work but yeah. you've just got a huge amount of firepower that can come out and because we're still in aoc ap0 is still okay yeah. because it doesn't matter you're not, either yeah, you're way. not paying for it yeah yeah so it can uh i played against don with it a few probably a month ago or so he was testing out a kind of more fun death guard list and it brought mortarian down to like four wounds mm. in the first round nice um yeah I, I mean i did spike the dice did spike but it's still you know it can do that kind of damage I, I i've taken out um played against tau and i took out a riptide turn one with it uh, there's things that you yeah. can do however of course if you go second and a couple harpies come over they can die that list. yeah but you know it is what it is in and then for the rest of it we got we do start with two cp and i've got two warp talent squads which if the enemy presents an opportunity i can, can throw them up use. there yeah we've got the berserkers um I'm oh, sorry, there's two rhinos. I don't know if I said that. So the berserkers can start in the rhinos if needed, if if I am going against flyers. Um Abaddon doing Abaddon things. Importantly, Abaddon does not have his warlord trait because yeah. Colonel Vendetta is one, of, one of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of frustrating there. Um Demon Prince is there, like for secondaries wise, similar. Demon Prince is the skulls option. Yeah. Um, sure. I don't like skulls really um but it, it, you know what else do we have yeah. like you know again the long war that's why i've got uh five units of obsec yeah and mobile killie infantry yeah sure um it can do rnd um it can do engage um you know it, it it's not kitted out to be superb at any secondary because much like that what dara said about mike's philosophy of secondaries who the fuck cares I, yeah i, I you know yeah, I, I think I'd agree, and I, I think uh, that was kind of a leading question to both of you, is that our secondaries at the moment, we just don't have that many good options. Yeah. Like, CSM, I feel, lean on the psychic ones, which obviously we don't have. So, yeah. so like, Warp Ritual and Mental Interrogation, or whatever it's called nowadays, um, yeah. they they get taken a lot by other legions, um, yeah. and we obviously don't have access to them. So we, I, 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 do, I at least struggle for a third secondary a lot of the time. Yeah, oh, um, almost, every, almost every game um sometimes it's hard to find uh like you there's normally one secondary like this list will obviously do well against um no prisoners because everything is killy and everything yeah. has volume so yeah. we're, we're rinsing most horde armies not necessarily it's not superb against them but you know two volkart contemptors and warp talons are just clearing one yeah, wound for sure army armies now like hard counters are going to be like if someone runs guard with oops all tanks yeah um it, and obviously with all i'm not sure what the lvo is doing for guard rules i think they're allowing they're, them in they're illegal for lvo are they only running old or are they just not it's old guard? with the with the armor of contempt for LVO. okay right, so okay. Uh, but that's still a problem if it's all tanks because I don't have much high strength but, in this list yeah so so yeah. old guard i think a lot of the old guard builds were based around the super heavy though um in yeah. which case your list is good yeah yeah, yeah. Um, it, it kind of mitigates it a bit yeah. but obviously Votan is a very rough counter for me yeah especially if they've got like 18 bikes in there or something if they were if they don't bring the bikes i'm I'm, I'm not confident but i'm less scared if they bring the, the bike yeah, to go the for speed to, like, my yeah. contenders just destroyed and then i'm trading 
spending two rounds trying to kill 18 bikes while they win the game. Yeah. Um, I, I would also... I, I know Volkite is good into Quins, but Eternal Vendetta feels like it probably isn't good into Quins just because of the way their army works. They don't really have a big fo A lot of yeah, armies will exactly. have a big focal unit, yeah, so like, like Terminators like, or whatever. Like, but... build where it's like the one giant... Or the blob of blob, 20 or like, something, yeah. What, what I would do in that situation is probably pick like something like their super fast Blitz character just Solitaire. to kind of make them think twice about Blitzing. Or you yeah. can pick the transport that one of those guys is in yeah. or something, yeah. you know? Yeah. 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 Just, you know, it's, it's a little psyops trick. You Do know, you pick uh, that after you're deployed, but before the game begins or before yeah, the pre game battle? Yeah. Uh, pre game, pre game after session. deployment. So it's Skulls of the Skull Throne, Eternal Vendetta, and, and Apple Pig yeah. and These are all done at the same time. So. That's cool. Yeah. Cool. I, I definitely, I think it, it's definitely, I mean, obviously, we talked about this a bit before. I definitely think mm -hmm. it's got some legs because. As I said, like a lot of lists at the moment have a focal unit that someone is channeling all their buffs into. Whether yeah. for CSM, it's Terminators, as you said, like Riptides, Flyers, um, with old Nids. I don't know what the state is for LVO. I've lost track, but like big, okay, big warrior gonna bricks and shit hardly, like that. All, it's going to be all the crap. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's so going to be the crack and shit. I imagine. Oh like, shit! Yeah, uh, like uh, Ravner, spam, Ravner, yeah. Ravner blobs and stuff. So like yeah, may, maybe a Ravna blob or or harpies, as you say, um, yeah. stuff or like both. that, or both. Um, An old onslaught hive turned. I'll cheers to that because I love that rule so much. <sighs> no, old no. everyone. Yeah, uh, overrun. <laughs> Sorry, not onslaught. Yeah. Onslaught is part of the the whole shebang, but yeah, it's onslaught on his own is not. <laughs> shit that shouldn't happen for me. Yeah. But... Oh, I yeah. can't wait to be covered in a in a spore mine carpet as well. That's going to be one that I particularly enjoy oh. if I come up against it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I so love turn it's The last time you have to play it though, Dar, it's fine. Yeah. Um. Yeah, okay, I did. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, yeah. Thanks for that, guys. Um. I I very much enjoyed hearing Dara's fresh new take on uh, his commentary. List. I am a visionary. He he is he is I, like I just think netlists, so you know. So... True, yeah. I've netlisted myself for my last <laughs> time. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for coming on this week, guys. This episode is going to be very long. Yeah, so, just by the way, you are absolutely welcome to dunk on me for my own three this week. It's fine. Oh, that's already um, written up. Those notes are already written up. Don't worry. Okay, cool. that, that'll, come, that'll come ahead of this in the video yeah, as well. Okay. <laughs> so, just so, yeah, Jack's an asshole for talking about my own three, okay? Okay, and thanks, big thanks to uh, Dara and Jamie for coming on to the show and uh, talking us through their thoughts on their lists and, and the LBO in general. Um, I just want to look into a couple of units then. So, obviously, there are some fairly significant mess changes coming in the next few weeks. Uh, even before our codex, um, there's going to be some fairly significant meta changes coming. Um, it is fair to say that Arx Vermin is looking like it'll hit base Chaos Space Marines quite hard. Um, we got the nerf of losing Armor of Contempt, but not the points drops that Loyalists got. The faction win rate was also, I feel, propped up by Emperor's Children and Creations of Baal. Even with those two factions doing really well, we were only up at like 55%. If that... No, they were up at 55%. We were only at 50%. Um, so I worry how much these nerfs are going to... Because the nerfs were quite heavy-handed. They hit Chaos Space Marines rather than the factions that were the problem, I feel. Um, as, as Alongside like putting up points on Terminators, I, I don't understand that. Um, I feel like the sub-factions that were already struggling might continue to or get worse. Um, it is worth noting that some of the secondaries for, uh, for Chaos Space Marines did massively improve. There were some quality of life changes around stuff completing at the end of the turn instead of in your next command phase. So Alpha Legion secondary has suddenly gotten really good. Um, the Red Corsair's one's gotten slightly better as well, I think. Um, yeah, so that's just like nice, nice to see that like Scoring is getting a little bit more reliable. There's some encouragement to take faction specific or some faction specific secondaries. Um, so finally, just taking a quick look at the great game. Um, <laughs> there wasn't much growth in the World Eaters number this this week. Um, we went from 191 to 192. So someone has found the true calling, but not many others, or no one else did, um, with submitted scores around the world. Empress Children are up to 253. Thousand Sons are at 1,164, and Death Guard are at 1,335. So, still a couple of weeks, maybe a month, 
but still a couple of weeks at least. Um, there's a lot of stuff pointing towards sooner rather than later for World Eaters. So obviously the Combat Patrol content's got released. Um, Warhammer Plus are doing a battle report um, featuring by the looks of it Angron, which will be very exciting and expect a video from us on that um, as soon as we've had a chance to watch it. Um, we've got a couple of other videos coming soon around uh, arcs and how you can adapt to that with the current book. Um, Dara's got some hobby stuff coming. Stay tuned for that. Um, join the Discord if you haven't. Shout at me. Um, we're generally quite civil. Generally. Um, yeah. Like, comment, subscribe. Watch the video more. I don't know. Do stuff. Um, build baby knights. They're good. Um, but magnetize them. Um, yeah. So, just as always... Stay healthy, stay safe, and kill me in birds.